Hey guys, I'm going to be showing how I made this skull ring and using the scroll brush that we made in the previous video to finish it off and do decorative work around the ring. So the first thing I do is I load up Ryan Kingsline's anatomy model, which you can find under the lightbox and tool. I just use auto groups, isolate the skull, and uh, delete everything else. And I get it and move it into position. And then I load up a primitive uh, cylinder. And for me, whenever I make a ring, I like to just load up the default cylinder. Uh, it measures in it 2x2x2. Two by two by two. And so for me, that 2x2x2 two by two by two translates to 2x2x2 two by two by two centimeters. And a two centimeter measurement inside a ring is about a size 10 ring. And that's usually what I model my rings around. This ring actually ends up being a size six, I think, six and a half, which is about 16.5 millimeters. But while I was modeling it, I was modeling it for things to measure and fit a size 10 ring, if that makes sense. So you can see that I just used clip curve to cut off the back of the skull and make that nice contour. And to just form the ring, I'm just mostly using the move brush right now. And just trying to form it around the cylinder and make it look like a ring. And distorting the face until it, you know, it looks right. And nothing has to be exact. It doesn't have to be anatomically correct. You know, I'm going for more of a stylized look anyway. I'm just trying to get the uh, shapes and proportions to a place that I'm happy with. Normally for a project like this I'd start with a sphere and just start sculpting at a low resolution DynaMesh. But since we already have a skull in ZBrush, it's so much quicker to just take that and you know manipulate it and form it into something that's useful for us. Once I get it to a point where I'm kind of happy with my overall shapes and form, I turn on DynaMesh and continue to use the move brush and inflate on some of the thinner areas. Here I'm just filling in this cavity, redynameshing anytime the topology is fighting me. At this stage I use the Damien standard brush to start defining where I want my hard edges to be. And I just try to follow peaks and valleys that are already there in the model. Just trying to make them stand out a little more. And really define the different areas. And I try not to get caught up into making too much detail or making things perfect. I'm just using the Damien standard lines and hard edges that I'm making as guides for when I'm retopologizing. I could try and sculpt more at this stage and really clean everything up. I know that's how some people prefer to model. But I find that with some of the more recent changes to ZBrush, it's not that difficult to retopologize everything, especially with Z Modeler. I feel like uh, I feel like Z Modeler has really helped in cutting my actual retopology time down. I spend a lot less time in Z Sphere retopology and a lot more time in Z Modeler. And it used to be that I had to do almost everything with Z-Sphere retopology. And you guys will see more what I mean in my next video when I retopologize this piece. And retopology in general just really helps me simplify the forms and clean up a lot of my edges. Also, low topology models with decent edge flow, much easier to change and manipulate later on. It's a lot easier to add to, take stuff off. And also, Z Remesher is a nice alternative to manual retopology. But it's tough on a model like this where I want very specific edge flow and I want it to be as low resolution as I can get it. Z Remesher can still work on a model like this, on a hard edge model like this, by using slice brushes to make poly groups and separate plane changes, then using the polish by groups or features under deformation. But I still find manual retopology to be just as fast and a, a little cleaner anyways. 
So manual retopology is usually what I go with for a model like this. Thanks for watching and I'll cover retopology in my next video.